Hey there, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome back. I apologize for the mix up this morning. Okay, let's hope that it works this time. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada, and I'm happy to be here to share some crafting projects with you. So today I'm kicking off um, the first in a series of Facebook Lives that I'm doing. So every Friday from now until the end of February, I will be picking a different celebration product to focus on, and I'll be crafting with that product. I'm just gonna straighten my screen here. And today I've chosen the Driving By stamp set. Okay, let's let's really hope that this goes through here. <laughs> okay, I apologize for the mix up. All right, so this product is one of the celebration offerings. Celebration runs until February 28th, and you can pick this set for free with a $60 purchase. And I decided to choose this one because this is one that I had not inked up yet. So I've had fun with lots of the lots of other celebration products, but I have not played with this set, stamp set yet. So I've got three projects to share with you today. Two of them I'll be making, um, and the third I'll just be sharing with you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now we're going to start with, okay, our card base is going to be a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This is just a standard size card base, so five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I've got a layer of crumb cake that measures four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to pull in a scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to use this image here. So this little cute little Volkswagen bug with a pile of gifts on top of it and some crumb cake ink. So I'm gonna stamp tone on tone. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Karen, welcome. Make sure that you say hi when you're watching because you will have the opportunity to win the two cards that I'm making today. Um, I will draw. Um, based on who comments and just kind of participates in the conversation as we go along. So I'll draw and um, let, the know, let the winners know next week who has won these great cards. It's always nice to know that you're not sitting here talking to yourself. Hello, Shirley. Happy Friday. Okay, so I'm going to ink this up with my crumb cake and I'm going to stamp the first one kind of right where I want my focal point to be. Good afternoon Marge. Yes, warm hello. It's another chilly day out there. And then I'm going to ink it up and create a background. I stamp it multiple times all over. I stamped this one first because I want my focal point to be kind of in the lower right corner. So that's going to give me an idea of where to put it. So we're just going to stamp a few of these. And I'm trying not to do them so that they're lined up underneath each other. I want them to be staggered in height and in position. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay, so we've created our background. And now I'm going to clean that because I want to stamp it again. Actually, you know what? Let's do our envelope first. I'm going to bring in my envelope and we're just going to stamp one of these in the lower right corner. Okay, now we're going to clean it. Good afternoon, Kathy. Because we want to stamp it in some memento ink because I'm going to stamp it and color it in with my Stampin' Blends. So I've got a scrap piece of white here and I'll grab my memento and stamp it right on there. We're going to color that in. Actually, while I've got this, let's also do one of the greetings. So I am going to choose for the outside of my card, this driving by just to say hi. And we're gonna 
ink that up with memento and I'm going to stamp that down here. Okay. All right, actually, we're going to bring back the memento once again, and I'm going to bring back my, I'm going to bring in the inside layer. So this is just a four by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white. And I wanted to turn this into a birthday card because there is no birthday greeting in here. I thought it would combine really well with this special moment stamp set. This is another celebration offering, and this is one that you'll probably see me use maybe not every week, but I, it will be one that I use often just because there are so many great greetings. In my opinion, you can never have enough greeting sets in your collection because you're always looking for just the perfect greeting or sentiment for the recipient of the card. So having a nice variety of greetings is great. And this has some really great ones in here, but I'm just gonna choose this happy birthday um, because I wanna make it a birthday greeting. So I'm gonna ink that up with some memento and stamp it right in the center of my white card layer. Good morning, Lana. Or I guess it's afternoon now, right? Okay, let's see here. Yes, that is a great one, Karen. It's a good goal to get that, that greeting set. It seriously is awesome. Okay, all right, so we've got all of our stamped pieces done. Now, I'm just gonna give that a little bit more time just for that memento ink to set before I color it in. I'm gonna bring back this layer and my paper snips. And those of you who watch my videos, you know that this is something that I just love to do right now. So I am distressing the edges, which isn't really something, if you look at the style of this stamp set, this is, it's a line art stamp. It's, you know, kind of a simple stamp set and maybe doesn't really have kind of a, I don't know, a vintagey kind of feel to it or distressed kind of feel um, just because of the, not the style of it. But that doesn't mean you can't do that, something like that. It just adds so much texture to the card. I love it. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adhere this. Right onto our crumb cake card base. And I am really liking right now, like tone on tone layers. So the crumb cake on the crumb cake, but I just feel like distressing that around the edges like that just really makes this layer pop just a little bit more. Okay, so that's gonna be the foundation of our card. Now we can bring in this guy and we're gonna to start to color it. So I've got, slide all of these pieces over to the side here. I've got a selection of blends here. So I've got the light black. I've got a light smoky slate, no, dark smoky slate. I've got misty moonlight, both light and dark. I've got poppy parade, both light and dark. And I've got Daffodil Delight, both light and dark. And then I've got my light pool party. So those are the colors that I'm working with. And let's start with, let's start with the black. And I'm just gonna do around the tires in black. So just this outer rim of the tire, I'm coloring all in black. I'll do that for both of them. And we'll do this. So I had a little mix up with the Wi-Fi this morning because of course um, my son's in university and classes are online. And so we were competing with Wi-Fi and I, for the life of me, I could not get it to work. But I was also using my new phone. And I think that that might have been the issue because he, once his classes were done, his classes ended at one, so that's why I decided to try again at one. 
and I went on with my new phone and I was still having issues. So I think it's my new phone that is having a problem connecting properly. So I went back to using my old phone, which I used for filming my videos and I didn't have an issue. So I'm not sure what is going on there. You gotta love technology. Okay, so now I'm taking the dark smoky slate and I'm doing the second layer of that tire. Oh, actually, while we've got this out, I'm gonna switch this around and I'm gonna color the bumpers in with this smoky slate as well. Okay, all right, and then we can move those two colors away. I'm gonna bring in some pool party and I'm gonna color the windows in pool party just so that it looks like you can kind of see through. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna add another little touch to that as well, a little bit later on. Okay, now we'll do Misty Moonlight. I'm gonna take my dark Misty Moonlight and just add a little bit of dark here and then the top of this gift a little bit as well. And then I'll fill in the rest with the light. And with my Misty Moonlight, there's not a whole lot of difference in the, the shades of the colors. But if you look closely, you can see the difference but you guys who are, who are watching, you probably can't see the difference on camera. Okay. And then we'll do some Poppy Parade. So let's do a tiny little bit of dark Poppy Parade, every other stripe. And then we'll fill it in with light. So I'd love to hear, what is your f favorite celebration offering? Is there a product that you absolutely love and you must have? Okay, now I'm gonna take, go back to my dark and I'm gonna fill in a little bit of dark. I'm gonna go around the bottom of the car and then just add a little bit of dark here and there and then I'll blend blend it with the light and fill in the rest. The little otters, Kim says, those are pretty sweet. And I think they pair really well with the marble, the marble DSP as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of dark up here and then just a little bit there and then I'll color in the rest with the light. So you can see that there is a big difference between my light and dark Poppy Parade colors. So I will go over where I've added dark quite a bit to try to soften that transition, that harsh, harsh transition a little bit. But the other thing I wanna be careful of is I don't wanna go over it too, too much because the more you go over it, the more chance you have of the color blending or bleeding out side the lines. So I'm just trying to be very careful. There we go. Okay, and then the last color that we have is some daffodil and I'm gonna color that and the light and then fill it in with some light here okay Tracy says the friendly hello oh she likes a few of them <laughs> she says I think the my favorite is the friendly hello bundle I also like the marble DSP and the daffodil oh and the rainbow DSP yeah there's lots of great stuff isn't there it's hard to pick just one favorite all right Okay, so there we've got our little beetle. And now we are going to fussy cut it. So I've gone ahead and I've fussy cut that for you. So I just cut around it. And when I fussy cut around an image, I almost always 
um, leave just a little bit of white showing around the edges. It just makes it look a little bit more forgiving um, so that if your cuts are not perfect, which nobody's cuts are perfect, you're never gonna cut a, a perfect image. I feel like you don't notice your flaws so much when you have that white background or that white little border. Okay, and then this greeting we're gonna take and we're gonna cut it out and then we're gonna separate the words. So I'm gonna take, actually I'm gonna use some longer bladed scissors here. So I'm gonna cut this straight down and then I'm gonna separate the two lines and then I'm gonna separate the words. Let's trim this a little bit. make sure that I don't throw any of my words away here okay and then I'll trim this a little narrower and then I'm going to separate each of these words as well there and these two Okay, so these pieces are garbage. All right, so let's bring in the rest of our pieces here. Okay, so I have a vellum circle. This is, it's about two and a quarter inches. And I'm going to add this, just using a strip of adhesive, and I'm going to add it. So remember, this car is going to be my focal point, right? This is where I'm going to add my focal point. So I positioned it so that my car is going to sit on top of this, but further to the right, okay? And then I've just got a scrap piece of paper. This is from the Patterned Party, or Pattern Party DSP, which is a, is a Stampin' Rewards option. So you can use your Stampin' Rewards to choose this paper pack. And this is a fabulous paper pack. I've used it for so many different projects. It's black and white on one side, and then it's got some great patterns on the other, and the colors are just amazing. Okay, so that's gonna go across like that. Let's move it over just a little bit. Make sure that's straight. And then I've got a quarter inch strip of black, and I'm gonna angle cut this again. And this one I want to be just slightly longer. So this piece is about three and three quarters, or three and a half, and this piece is about three and three quarters. Okay. And then we're gonna add this onto here. Okay, and then we're gonna take this, we're gonna add it using some dimensionals. And pop this up. And then we can add our greeting. Okay, that's gonna go on like that. See, it's already coming together. So my initial impress, my, my initial thought when I first did this, I wasn't going to add this cluster of things in behind. I was simply going to take this and pop it up right on top of one of these. And I did that and it was just, it felt like it was, you know, it did pop because it did have some color, but it just wasn't the look. It didn't carry the weight that I wanted it to hold on the card. I felt like it needed more. So that's why I decided to do this little cluster in behind. Okay, so we're going to add a little white Baker's Twine bow, of course. Of course, we're gonna put that right here just for a little bit of added texture. Right there. Just like that. 
and then we're going to add our greeting. So I want it to say driving by just to say. So I don't want to use the hi. So I'm going to set that aside. So I'm going to start with the last word and I'm going to use my tweezers. This will help me position it. And I'm not going to put them on straight. I want this card to kind of feel a bit more whimsical. So I'm not looking for perfection. Yeah, the yellow does kind of look like a road, doesn't it? If you did black and then with the yellow lines in between, uh, yeah, it would. It would look great as a road. Okay, and then we'll do just, and then the word by. And then the word driving. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to add on to this project is some classic black or classic matte dots. So this is a new embellishment from the January to June mini catalog. And let's grab a paper piercing tool. I'm going to use the white ones. We'll add one here, one up here, and then we'll do one over here. Okay, and then we can take our inside layer. So this is a great masculine card. You could do something a little bit more feminine if you wanted to make it feminine. You could color the, the car in pink, that would be fun, or purple. Um, but I get, I, I think this is a great masculine card. So there we've got our matching envelope and our first driving by card. Super cute, simple, comes together quite nicely. If you didn't want to, if you're not a fan of fussy cutting, you could stamp this on your circle and then just punch it out or stamp it on a piece of white and then punch it out using a circle. And you could still do this idea and you could do this idea just behind your circle. Okay, so there's an idea if you are not a fan of fussy cutting. Okay, so there is card number one. Now our second card. We've got some pieces here. All right, so I'm gonna pull in a couple other products for this card. Now we're, our card base is Poppy Parade, just a standard size five and a half by eight and a half. Move some of this stuff out of the way here. And then I've got two layers of white. One is four by five and a quarter. That's gonna be for the inside. And then the other one is three and three quarters by five. And this is what we're gonna work with first. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created a template and I actually just keep this in this die set because it's something you can see that I use over and over and over. I've used it lots. So I took about a two by six inch piece of white cardstock and I took this cloud border die from the basic border dies, which are in the annual catalog. This is another must have. This, everybody needs this set, especially with the new rainbow bundle. This, you were gonna use these two or that bundle and this die set together so often. It just looks so great together. So I've created this. So I just cut that from a two by six inch piece of white and like I said I just keep this slipped in the back here so that it's always handy and that way I don't have to cut one or cut a template every time I go to use it and then I'm going to bring in my blending brush and some pool party ink and we're going to create a subtle background all right so I'm just going to ink this up and I'm going to start towards the top and I'm gonna, the first place I put my brush is going to be on the template. And I'm just gonna go across. And I am not concerned with going right from end to end or side to side. And you can add as many layers as you want. Obviously the more layers of ink that you add, the darker it will be. 
This is a really light color, so it will be subtle. So let me bring that up a little closer so you can see what that looks like. Doesn't that look awesome? It's so simple to create fun little backgrounds like this. Okay, so now I'm going to move this over and do it kind of at an angle. So you don't always have to do it straight. Clouds are in so many different positions and they're different shapes. So um, you can see that I'm just doing a portion of it. I'm not going all the way across. And then I'll do it here. Maybe one more. I don't want to go all the way down to the ground and you'll see why, or down to the bottom, sorry. Uh, let's see. So what I'm trying to avoid, again, I'm trying to avoid my clouds lining up. Let's do it like this. Okay, there we go. All right, so doesn't that look great? And it took no time at all to create that fun background. Okay, so we're done with this. Now I've got a half inch strip of white cardstock. And I'm going to take my Smoky Slate Stampin' Write marker. Now this marker is different than this marker. This is our Stampin' Write marker. These are our Stampin' Blends. Our Stampin' Write markers you can use right on your stamps. They're water-based, whereas our Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based and you cannot use them on your stamps. These ones are used for coloring in your images. Okay, so we're gonna use this. We're not gonna use it on the stamps this time, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in a ruler and I'm gonna line this up so it's straight about the middle of the half inch strip. And this is longer than what it needs to be. I'll trim it down. And I'm just going to do like a dashed border so that it looks kind of like a road. So you could also do this if you wanted it to be a little bit more genuine or authentic. You could do it on black with a white gel pen so that it looked a little bit more like a true road. I'm not too concerned with that. And I didn't want the black, I really want this to be a little bit more of a subtle card, so I didn't want it to be too noticeable. I think this strip is actually a little bit wider than I want it to be. You know what, I'm gonna grab my trimmer. I'm just gonna trim this just a little bit smaller here, a little bit narrower. I want it to be just a smidge smaller than half an inch. Now, because I did my line already, I'm gonna have to trim it off both sides. Let's see how close I can get it. So we've got some exciting news in our house. Um, oh, that moved. Well, hopefully it'll still be okay. Our daughter and her fiance have started looking for a house and they think they found one that they want to make an offer on. So we get to, they want us to go have a look at it tomorrow. So we're very excited for them. Big step. All right. Okay. So that is going to go across like that. Before I stick it down, I'm going to take this driving by just to say hi, greeting again. I'm going to clean it. And I'm going to stamp it a couple times on a scrap piece of paper here. <sighs> Huff on it. <sighs> I want to make sure that there is no ghosting. So if you can see where I stamped it, there is a little bit of ghosting there. <sighs> I want to make sure that all of that is off. <sighs> because I want to ink up with my stamp and Write marker. So again, this is water-based. And I'm going to ink up driving by... Yes, it's very exciting, Tracy, very exciting. This is only the third house that they've looked at and they think it's perfect, so very exciting. And it's not too far from where we are, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> okay, all right, so I've inked up everything except the word hi. 
I'm gonna huff on this and I'm going to stamp it right in the center. Let's make sure this is straight. This is throwing me off, let's move that. Okay, so I've got that, we'll put that aside. Now, I don't like how it's not, like if you look at this, it's like, what do you call that? It's justified on both ends. So I don't like how there's that gap there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Stampin' Write marker and I'm gonna put dot, dot, dot. So that makes it, it justifies it so that it's centered and it makes me feel better. <laughs> Little things like that drive me bonkers. Okay, so now I've got a layer of black cardstock. Actually, before we stick that on, let's stick this, this piece on. So I'm gonna use just some seal adhesive. Again, we'll make sure this is straight. This is gonna go across like that. And then we can trim this off. And then I'm gonna attach this to a layer of black. So this black piece is uh, three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So it's just slightly larger so that we have a little bit of black peeking out from behind. Oh, are you working on cards with this set too, Tracy? You'll have to share. Okay. And then this is gonna go in the center of our card base. Just like that. Okay, so now we need to work on our focal point. Tuck that in there. Okay, so I've got a scrap piece of white cardstock, and this time we're going to use this image here and some memento. So I'm going to ink that up and stamp it down on my scrap. Oh, you're creating them for our event. All right. And let's see, can we fit this all? This isn't a very big piece of paper here. doesn't matter which direction because I am going to fussy cut this. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna color it in and we're gonna use the same colors that we used last time. So I'm going to take my black and color in, I probably should have stamped this so I could let it dry. Let's hope that it doesn't smear here. Okay, so I'm gonna color the, t the wheels just like I did on the last one. And I probably don't need to color the whole thing in. You just saw me color in the other car. And then I'll do gray. For the second layer. And the bumper. Oh, you know what? I forgot to add my little special touch on the last card. I'll bring it back when I do this one. Okay, and then I'm going to do pool party for the windshield. And we're gonna do the balloons. So we're gonna do one balloon in misty moonlight. and one in yellow. And one in red. Right. and we're going to cut
color our car in red as well because this is another great masculine card. I thought this, this was a great set for creating masculine birthday cards. So that's what we're creating today. So just add a little bit of dark and then we'll fill in the rest of it with some light. So can you see how different the colors are from the dark to the light? So if you just go over that transition point where the dark meets the light. If you add a few layers, that helps blend it in a little bit better so that that transition doesn't look as, as sharp or there's not that much of a contrast. Okay, and then we're gonna take some yellow and do the light. I don't know if that's light or not, but we're gonna say it's a light. Okay, let's just finish this off, let's color this last wheel. Oops. So we'll go around the edges here. I don't use my black Stampin' Blends very much because I do find them very, very dark. I use them mostly for splattering. And then we'll take the light or sorry, the dark smoky slate and go around. Okay. All right, so there's our car. Now I wanted to share on the last one, let's bring in this, remember how I colored the windows with pool party? I've got a white gel pen, which we don't actually sell anymore. This is a Uniball Signo broad white gel pen. And I'm just going to do some little lines on the windows. And it just makes it look like the light is shining off the windows. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this or not. It's very, very subtle. Just wait for my, can you, well, you can kind of see it. Can you see it? It's very subtle. But I like that, that extra little touch that it adds. So I did that on here. And then I also did it on the, the windshield here. Okay, so now we're gonna fussy cut this and we're gonna end up with a car and three little balloons. And I separated my balloons because I wanted to add some texture to the card. So I've got just my balloons with no strings. Okay, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, now I'm trying to think how I did this. Okay, flip it over and we're gonna bring in some white baker's twine and we're gonna cut three little strips. And then we're gonna take these strips and put them together and they are gonna go right here like that. Those are probably a little long, but we can trim them. We're going to bring in a dimensional. This is going to hold these puppies down. We'll add another dimensional over here. Peel that off and pop our car onto our road. Like that. Okay, so yeah, these are a little bit long, so we'll just trim these. Okay, and then we're gonna take a dimensional and we're just gonna cut it kind of in quarters here because we need them to be quite small. And we're gonna put one on each, on the back of each one of these balloons. And 
we'll start with our yellow. Grab my tweezers, so we'll help. Okay, and I'm gonna position my string where I want it. And then my balloon, oops, it's gonna go right on top of that string. And the dimensional will hold the, the string in place. And then we'll grab another one. Just using my paper piercing tool to kind of put them in the position that I want them in. Okay, and then the red one will be in the center. And I'm going to kind of fit it right in between here. And my dimensional is a little bit bigger than I want it to be here. It's getting in the way. There we go. Okay. So there we go. So we just replaced that the strings with the twine and it just adds a little bit of texture there. Okay, and then what I did was I took the Brilliant Rainbow dies and I used these two clouds and just cut them from white cardstock and we're going to add these on here as well just just as another accent on here. So we're going to do one there and then we'll take a dimensional and add this guy. Right here. And there's the front of our card. Okay, and then for the inside, we're going to bring back that happy greeting, happy birthday greeting and some memento ink. And we'll just stamp that right in the center. And add that to the inside of our card and then it will be done. So there is card number two, another masculine. I think my memento might almost be gone here. Another masculine birthday card using the driving by stamp set. And then I've got a third one that I'm gonna share with you. I'm not gonna make it for you. It's a little bit more involved, but it's pretty fun. Okay, so there's card number two, there's card number one. And then here is the third one here. And it's a little shaker card. So I've used the just a card to say you're yeah, the greeting, just a card to say you're amazing. That is from this special moment stamp set. And then in the background, you can see that I repeated this same idea on the white layer in behind. It's very subtle. I didn't do it very dark, but it's the same idea repeated there. I used the Sparkle and Shine Sequence Assortment. This is from the January to June mini catalog as the contents for the shaker. I used the rainbow dies for the clouds, just like I did here. I did some paper piecing for this. So this is the Pattern Party DSP, as is this. And what you do to do pattern piecing is I stamped it, I stamped the Volkswagen van on, with Memento on white. And then I also stamped it with Memento on patterned paper. And then I cut right on the line on the patterned paper ones. Okay, so, and I did it in two separate pieces. So you can see that this is white here. So this piece is one piece and then this piece is the other. So remember when I said that I fussy cut, when I fussy cut, I leave a little bit of a white border around the edges because it's a little bit more forgiving. When you do paper piece, paper piecing, you want to cut right on the line. Okay, you don't want a white border. Okay, so that's where you don't leave a, a white border, but it gives it kind of like a 
hipster, not a hipster, um, a hippie kind of feel. I love it. And then I used the palm dies to create my palm tree because I felt like it needed something off to the off to the left here. And then here, just like Sarah said, um, I could actually add like a dashed white line so that it looks like it's driving on a road here. Uh, I think that would be really cute, a really cute addition there. And you could also color in the bits and pieces here that are showing, but I chose to just leave it white. And I don't think I did anything. Yeah, I didn't do anything on the inside. But there is another card using a card idea for the driving by stamp set. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like I said, every week for the next, I think it's seven weeks. So until the end of February, every Friday, I will be focusing on a different celebration product and giving you ideas on how to use those products. All right. So if you saw anything, any of the products that I use today and you would like to order them and live in Canada, I would appreciate you choosing me as your demonstrator. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend and you have a chance to get crafty. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye guys.